Hello and welcome to episode four of Build an SD Access Fabric. My name is Jerome Dolphin and today we'll be reviewing LAN automation. In this episode, we'll use LAN automation to zero touch onboard factory default switches into a routed access network, which is ready to receive SD Access Fabric roles that we'll be provisioning in the next episode of Build an SD Access Fabric. Some of the design and settings we'll be discussing today were established in earlier episodes in this video series. So if you want the full context, you might need to go back and review those earlier episodes. For those new to LAN automation, it will discover factory default switches in your network and with zero administrative effort on the switch console, onboard those switches as ISIS level two routers which are ready to serve the SD access underlay. LAN automation discovers and onboards factory default switches in what we call a LAN automation session. And in each session, up to 50 factory default switches can be onboarded. If you have more than 50, then typically you'd run multiple sessions. Session one might discover the first 50, session two, the second 50, and so on. Now it's important to note that a level two ISIS routing domain should not scale beyond 250 level two routers. In other words, it shouldn't scale beyond 250 Catalyst 9000 switches. Going beyond 250 will require ISIS areas, which are out of scope for this discussion today, but we can cover it in a future video. LAN automation allows up to five sessions in parallel, so if you have multiple areas where you're discovering switches, then it is possible to run a session at say site one and also a session at site two and site three and so on. And as part of the onboarding process, if you have set a golden iOS XE image in SWIM, then LAN automation will also install that image to the factory default switches, bringing them up to whatever your standard iOS XE image is. Or alternatively, you can install your preferred iOS XE image post LAN automation. It really just depends on your preferences. There is a LAN automation guide on cisco.com. That's a hyperlink there on screen, but it obviously won't translate to video. So you can search that name in your web browser, or I'll post a link to the LAN automation deployment guide in the notes below this episode. As a friendly reminder, we have the Cisco SD Access compatibility matrix. It lists what platforms are supported in SD Access, in what roles, what iOS XE images are supported on those platforms, and also a recommended image for that platform in that role. And this matrix does change periodically, so I'd suggest going to review the actual matrix rather than this particular slide on screen right now. And typically, of course, we would recommend that people proceed with the recommended image for the specific platform and role. Now, LAN automation is not mandatory for SD access underlay, which is the foundation that supports SD access. You can, instead of using LAN automation, configure the switches manually that would mean you need to onboard them using plug and play or consoling into each switch to put in a routing configuration, username, password, and so on. You would need to design an IGP and configure it to function as the SD access underlay. And you may also need to design and configure a multicast routing solution if you have layer two flooding or native multicast replication in your SD access overlays. The upside of doing it manually is you can use any IGP. So if you need OSPF or EIGRP or heaven forbid static routes, then you would not use LAN automation and instead configure these things manually. But as I said, there is a trade off here. If you do this manually, then you have to do a significant amount of work compared to LAN automation, which will take care of all of the routing design and configuration for you. So how does this demonstration look? Well, we've got our Catalyst Center and Identity Services Engine, which uh, play a role directly and indirectly in LAN automation. And we have these two 
factory default switches. These will in future end up becoming the STAXS border nodes, but for now they are factory default switches. So I've unboxed those, cabled them, booted them, and I've applied a very basic preliminary configuration to those two switches. I'll show you what that is in a moment, but to give you an idea, I've given them each a host name, MEL, EBCP1 and 2. I've given them loopback addresses. I've configured BGP between those two previously factory default switches and my existing network, and I've put ISIS between those two previously factory default switches. So if we zoom in for a second, I won't linger on this for too long. Uh, you can pause the video and review the commands. But for the MAL EBCP1, we've got some credentials for user login, SNMP login, and then we've gone ahead and set ISIS, a loopback address, two routed interfaces to the other EBCP2, and started the BGP process, advertising EBCP1 and EBCP2 loopback zero addresses into the existing network. That makes this switch and the next switch, switch one and two, reachable to Catalyst Center, allowing them to be discovered via their loopback address. So if I advance to EBCP2, the preliminary configuration I've applied on the console is more or less the same as the previous. It's just that the IP addresses have been incremented to represent obviously a different switch and it has a different host name, of course. Okay, so that preliminary configuration is applied to the two switches, the two bottommost switches in the diagram. And it's brought up uh, two routing protocols, BGP and ISIS, and the loopbacks of EBCP1 and EBCP2 are, as I said, reachable to Catalyst Center. That means in Catalyst Center, we can now discover these switches, which means learn about their existence and read in their configuration. And then we can set them as LAN automation seeds. So a primary seed and a secondary seed. And when we do that, these seed switches will function as a launching pad to discover downstream factory default switches. Now those factory default switches just need to be powered on and cabled to the LAN automation seeds. There's no need to enter the console or do any configuration manually on the factory default switches. LAN automation will take care of discovering them and deploying a preliminary configuration, which is appropriate for servicing an SD access fabric. Once the LAN automation process completes, we have this end-to-end -end routed access network comprised of an IS-IS level two routing domain. And as we'll see in the video, we'll also choose to switch on multicast routing in this LAN automation network. And multicast routing in that network is important if we intend to use SD access layer two flooding or SD access native multicast replication. We'll review both of those in a future video, but typically you do want to turn on that multicast routing just to be ready for the possibility those other features, layer two flooding and native multicast replication will be used later. All right, so if something's not clear at the end of this video, including the demonstration that we're about to launch into, then please do post a question on communities or of course, talk to one of our most capable partners, sales representatives or CX representatives. And here we'll conclude the slide based component of our LAN automation discussion and part one of the LAN automation episode. Please join me in part two, where we'll go through an in product demonstration. Thanks for now. See you in part two.